today's topic is projectile motion so projectile first of all hum isko introduce karte hain projectile is an object projected in a space with certain initial velocity and then allowed to move under the influence of gravity projectile is an object which is projected in a space with certain initial velocity and then allowed to move under the influence of gravity that is projectile ek aisa object hai jise hum kisi bhi velocity ke sath throw karte hain aur jab ye ek khaas height pe pahunch jaye to wahan se phir ye zameen ki taraf aayega gravity ke zariye se projectile is an object which is thrown with any initial velocity and then after reaching a certain height it moves downward under the influence of gravity or simply another definition of projectile is projectile motion is two dimensional motion under gravity two dimensional motion under gravity is called projectile motion two dimensional motion under gravity is called projectile motion that is when we throw projectile so you see it, it is it is moving upward that is it covers vertical distance as well as it cover horizontal distance i mean during the course of its journey the projectile has two component of velocity that is v not x component and v not y component v not is the velocity of projectile initial velocity and as you know that the velocity is a vector quantity so vector in x y plane has two component you see the projectile motion is actually two dimensional motion in x y plane so its velocity will have two component the x component of velocity and the y component of velocity clear so this is the, the introduction of projectile let me repeat again projectile is an object which is projected in a space with certain initial velocity and then after reaching some height it moves down under gravity or any two dimensional motion under gravity is called projectile motion the for example motion of motion of ball hooked in a cricket match cricket match mein jo hook shot hai wo projectile motion ki example hai jis tarah aap ne dekha hoga ke cricket mein jab ek batsman 50 ya century score karta hai to phir uska wagon wheel dikhaya jata hai to us wagon wheel mein agar aap dekhe to usme jo sixers hote hain wo is tarah graph mein dikhai gaye hote hain इसके अलावा प्रोजेक्टाइल मोशन की सेकेंड एग्जांपल है सेकेंड एग्जांपल है द बॉम्ब द बॉम्ब बॉम्ब्ड बाय अ बॉम्बर द बॉम्ब बॉम्ब्ड बाय अ बॉम्बर सपोज वी हैव अ जेट फाइटर जेट एंड व्हेन इट डज बॉम्बिंग ड्यूरिंग इट्स मोशन सो द bomb moves uh, in such a style that it follows the trajectory of projectile motion so bombing from a bomber is also an example of projectile motion in addition to it the ball scooped in a hockey match is another example of projectile motion so all these are the examples of projectile motion har wo motion projectile motion hai 
जिसमें इस तरह की मोशन इस तरह के पाथ को बाड़ी ड्यूरिंग द मोशन इस तरह के पाथ को फॉलो करें दिस पाथ इज कॉल्ड पैराबोला रिमेंबर द पाथ फॉलोड द पाथ फॉलोड बाय प्रोजेक्टाइल इज कॉल्ड इट्स ट्रेजेक्ट्री इट्स ट्रेजेक्ट्री प्रोजेक्टाइल जो पाथ फॉलो करता है उसको हम प्रोजेक्टाइल की ट्रेजेक्ट्री कहते हैं एंड द ट्रेजेक्ट्री ऑफ प्रोजेक्टाइल द ट्रेजेक्ट्री ऑफ प्रोजेक्टाइल द शेप ऑफ द ट्रेजेक्ट्री ऑफ प्रोजेक्टाइल इज पैराबोलिक इज पैराबोलिक द पाथ फॉलोड बाय प्रोजेक्टाइल इज कॉल इट्स ट्रेजेक्ट्री प्रोजेक्टाइल जो पाथ फॉलो करता है उसको हम प्रोजेक्टाइल की ट्रेजेक्ट्री कहते हैं एंड द शेप ऑफ दिस ट्रेजेक्ट्री इज पैराबोला और पैराबोलिक राइट द ब्रांच ऑफ फिजिक्स इन विच वी स्टडी प्रोजेक्टाइल मोशन इज कॉल्ड बैलिस्टिक्स दैट ब्रांच ऑफ फिजिक्स इन विच वी स्टडी प्रोजेक्टाइल मोशन is ballistics ballistic missile ka naam aapne suna hoga you have heard about ballistic missile so it's all about projectile motion the branch of physics in which we study projectile motion is called ballistics now remember the important things about projectile motion there are few important things which are to be remembered that is characteristic we can call those terms as characteristics of projectile motion characteristics of projectile motion kya hai number first during the course of the entire journey of projectile during the course of its journey the x component of velocity of projectile remains constant the x component of velocity of projectile remains constant that is when the projectile moves from the point of projection from the point where it, it is thrown to the point of landing so whole way long the x component of velocity doesn't change that is whatever the value of x component of velocity initially it will retain or it will maintain its velocity along x axis all the way long the x component of velocity ki jo value idhar hai wo x component ki value idhar bhi hogi x component ki wahi value idhar bhi hogi idhar bhi hogi idhar bhi hogi whole way long the x component of velocity remains constant you need the x component of velocity never changes clear so as the x component of velocity remains constant throughout the way so x component of acceleration will be zero there is by definition of acceleration we say that rate of change of velocity is called acceleration now as far as the x component of acceleration is concerned during projectile motion so it will be made of rate of change of velocity in x axis with respect to time time ke liye se x component mein velocity mein kitna change aata hai isko hum x component of acceleration kahenge now as we said the x component of velocity x component of velocity never changes so the change in x component of velocity will be zero so put zero over here delta v x ki jagah aap zero put kare to as change in x component of velocity zero hai to x component of acceleration ki value kya aayegi zero kyunki x component mein velocity constant rehti hai 
वेलोसिटी कांस्टेंट मीन एक्स कंपोनेंट में जो चेंज है डेल्टा स्टैंड फॉर चेंज जो चेंज इन वेलोसिटी अलॉन्ग एक्स एक्सेस है वो जीरो होगी तो जब चेंज जीरो है तो एक्सेलरेशन पैदा नहीं होगा सो द एक्स कंपोनेंट ऑफ वेलासिटी रिमेंस कॉन्स्टेंट एंड एक्स कंपोनेंट ऑफ एक्सेलरेशन इज जीरो हाउ एवर एज फॉर एज दी वाई कंपोनेंट इज कंसर्न तो याद रखें वाई कंपोनेंट ऑफ वेलासिटी वाई कंपोनेंट ऑफ वेलासिटी चेंज इज कंटिन्यूसली वाई कंपोनेंट ऑफ वेलासिटी चेंज इज कंटिन्यूसली तो एज द वेलासिटी इज चेंजिंग एलॉन्ग वाई एक्सेस सो देर मस्ट बी एक्सलरेशन दैट इज एक्सलरेशन यहाँ पे पैदा होगी विच विल बी इक्वल टू ग्रेविटेशनल एक्सलरेशन क्योंकि प्रोजेक्टाइल मोशन इज पेवरली मोशन अंडर ग्रेविटी वंस वी थ्रो अ प्रोजेक्टाइल एंड इट रीच इज अप टू अमिट अ सर्टन हाइट और सो कॉल समिट सो आफ्टर दैट इट मूव डाउन अंडर ग्रेविटी सो इट्स मोशन इज फ्री फॉल एंड फ्री फॉल मोशन में एक खास किस्म का एक्सलरेशन होता है Every freely falling object has a constant acceleration called acceleration due to gravity. So when we throw projectile from here, its velocity along y-axis is maximum. But uh, as it moves on uh, against the gravity, it slows down. It slows down, and the point where it reaches the summit, the maximum height. Here the vertical component of velocity becomes zero, and now it starts moving downward under gravity, so it speeds up. So I mean, whole way long, the vertical component of velocity gets on, keeps on changing. So as the velocity along y-axis is changing, so gravity uh, acceleration must be produced, and that acceleration is acceleration due to gravity, whose value is whose value is 9.8 meter per second square. right now we will study some terms related to the projectile motion in which the first one is magnitude of instantaneous velocity now we will study some terms related to projectile motion and parameter we can also call it parameters so these parameters are number first magnitude of instantaneous velocity that is if we have a projectile motion and as we study that during the course of its journey its velocity has two component we not x and we not y we not x remains constant throughout the way but we not y is initially we not y and as it moves upward it uh, uh, gets on decreased and when it reaches to a certain height called summit so its final vertical velocity becomes zero so magnitude of instantaneous velocity means that how we will find the velocity of projectile at any point during its journey projectile motion ke dauran hum velocity ka magnitude kaise find karenge to dekhe aapne chapter 2 mein vector mein padha tha ke magnitude of a vector can be found by squaring its by squaring its uh, x component of the vector and y component of that vector and then summing it up and taking the square root the formula for magnitude of any vector is this now as far as the velocity is concerned so here the formula for the magnitude of velocity will be uh, x component of velocity square plus y component of velocity square and then add them up and then take square root right now here you note uh, the point that we write v not x with the x component but we don't write v not y the reason behind that is the x component remains constant throughout the journey but the y component keeps on changing so the initial y 
come within top velocity is v not y after some time it uh, velocity becomes v y so we will take v not y or v y we will take the final value of velocity that is why we write v y over here dekhiye okay? projectile motion ke dauran x component of velocity to change nahi ho raha to isko hum v not x pe likhenge jab bhi hum velocity ka magnitude find karte hain to formula ye hai ki velocity ka x component square kare plus velocity ka y component square kare root le le इनको सम अप करें रूट ले ले प्लास्टिक का मैग्नीट्यूड फाइन हो जाएगा लेकिन एज पर एज द एक्स कंपोनेंट इज कंसर्न इट नेवर चेंजेस तो आप प्लास्टिक का मैग्नीट्यूड यहाँ फाइन कर रहे हैं यहाँ फाइन कर रहे हैं यहाँ पे या यहाँ पे एक्स कंपोनेंट ऑफ प्लास्टिक रिमेंस कॉन्स्टेंट थ्रू आउट द जर्नी हाउ एवर द वाई कंपोनेंट ऑफ प्लास्टिक चेंजेस यूनिफॉर्म कंटिन्यूसली सो द वाई कंपोनेंट की वैल्यू हम लिखेंगे वी वाई अब देखें यूजिंग द फर्स्ट इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन फर्स्ट इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन है वी एफ इज इक्वल टू वी आई प्लस ए टी बट हेयर द मोशन इज अगेंस्ट द ग्रेविटी सो वी विल राइट इज एस वी एफ इज इक्वल टू वी आई माइनस जी डी दैट इज ए विल बी रिप्लेस विद माइनस जी बिकॉज द मोशन इज अगेंस्ट द ग्रेविटी नाउ द फाइनल वेलासिटी एंड द इनिशियल वेलासिटी हेयर द फाइनल इनिशियल वेलासिटी मीन्स द इनिशियल वेलासिटी इन वाई एक्सेस रिमेंबर initial velocity in y axis is v not y the final velocity in y axis is v y so put the values over here final velocity is v y the initial velocity is v not y and minus gt as it is is that clear let me repeat as the velocity in y axis changes continuously So the initial vertical velocity is v not y. The final vertical velocity is v y. Maybe it may be here or here or here or here anywhere. The final velocity will be v y, which may be zero or anything. So using the first equation of motion and then putting the corresponding values, that is final vertical velocity v y and initial vertical velocity v not y. So we this equation becomes v not x will be written as it is. and vy will be written as v not y minus gt whole square under the root v not x ki jagah v not x square as it is or vy ki jagah put kar le ye value vy ki jagah ye value put kar le v not y minus gt to so, equation is tarah ban jayega now we know that x component equal hota hai v not x equal hoga v not cos of theta ke so v not cos theta whole square and here it will be equal to first of all is ko ab simplify kar le v not y is v not sin theta minus gt whole square now v not square cos square theta and this is a formula a minus b whole square so it will become a square plus b square minus 2 ab under the root what we did we just simplified it a as it contains square so square will be applied on both so we not square cos square theta and it is a minus b whole square the formula will be uh, expanded so a square plus b square minus 2 ab right now as you see in this question we have some common terms in this in these two values we have v not square is common so taking v not square as common we are left with cos square theta plus sin square theta and the remaining terms are left as it is as it is 2 gt v not sin theta as it is now as you see this is a mathematical identity in trigonometry we have studied that the sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 so put 1 over here this thing is equal to One, so we are left with this value. 
right so this is what the final equation for finding the magnitude of instantaneous velocity using this formula we can find out the magnitude of velocity of projectile at any point of its journey let me repeat when we throw a projectile from the point of projection and it moves on and it then it lands at the point of landing so if we want to find the velocity the magnitude of velocity at any point of journey so we will find the velocity magnitude of velocity using this formula so this is what we call magnitude of instantaneous velocity of projectile now the second parameter regarding projectile motion is maximum height maximum height of projectile maximum height can also be called summit पहले तो इसको आप अंडरस्टैंड कर लें वट इज मेंट बाय द मैक्सिमम हाइट और समेट इन प्रोजेक्टाइल मोशन सो डेफिनेशन ऑफ हाइट और समेट इज द ग्रेटेस्ट द ग्रेटेस्ट वर्टिकल डिस्टेंस द ग्रेटेस्ट वर्टिकल डिस्टेंस covered by a projectile or reached by a projectile from the point of projection is called maximum height of projectile or summit yani projectile point of projection se jab hum ise throw karte hain aur ye jata hai point of landing ki taraf to ye vertically kitna distance cover karta hai from height zero that is from earth surface to a certain height ye kitna distance vertically cover karta hai y axis mein this distance covered in y axis is called the maximum height of projectile or summit the greatest vertical distance reached or covered by a projectile from the point of projection to the point of landing clear the greatest vertical distance reached by a projectile from the point of projection in y axis is called summit or maximum height ये जा रहा है पॉइंट ऑफ प्रोजेक्शन से पॉइंट ऑफ लैंडिंग की तरफ तो इस डिस्टेंस को हम इग्नोर करते हैं फिलहाल इस वक्त हमारा कंसर्न ये है कि प्रोजेक्टाइल मोशन वाई एक्सिस में कितना डिस्टेंस कॉल करता है तो वाई एक्सिस में ये जितना ज्यादा से ज्यादा डिस्टेंस कॉल करता है मैक्सिमम पॉसिबल डिस्टेंस दैट इज कॉल दी मैक्सिमम हाइट ऑफ प्रोजेक्टाइल सो नाउ वी विल डिराइव इक्वेशन फॉर मैक्सिमम हाइट ऑफ प्रोजेक्टाइल why we derive equation for maximum height or summit of projectile let's suppose we are studying a projectile motion and we are asked or we are told to find the height of projectile so how will we find the height of projectile for that we have a formula and now we will derive that formula clear so to derive equation for height of projectile to derive equation for height of projectile use third equation of motion we will use third equation of motion now the third equation of motion as you know is 2 as is equal to v f square minus v i square now as we are concerned about the distance covered by projectile in vertical axis and y axis so it is motion against gravity if you see 
پوجیٹائل جب زمین سے ایک خاص ہائٹ کی طرف جائے گا ان دا پوجیٹائل موو فرام ارتھ سرفیس ٹو سرٹن ہائٹ سو اٹ از ایکچولی دا موشن اگینسٹ دی گریوٹی دا پل آف گریوٹی سو ہیئر دا اکویشن آف موشن بیکمز مائنس ٹو جی ایچ از ایکول ٹو مائنس ٹو جی ایچ از ایکول ٹو وی ایپ اسکوائر مائنس وی آئی اسکوائر وائی دا ٹو اے ایس بیکمز مائنس ٹو جی ایچ we studied early in this chapter that when we are doing vertical motion so acceleration will be replaced by g gravitational acceleration and the distance covered will be replaced by height and here we have a special case there is the motion is against the gravity so a will be replaced by minus g and distance cannot be negative so distance will be replaced by height as it is attaining certain height now Furthermore, the Vf and Vy stands for the vertical velocity of projectile. At the beginning, when we throw the projectile with certain velocity V0, so here it has two components of velocity. Here it has two components of velocity. V0 x component and V0 y component. Now ignore the x component of velocity because we are uh, finding out the equation of height and height is pay over vertical distance so we will take only the vertical velocity so the initial vertical velocity of projectile is v not y but as it moves upward it slows down slows down slows down and the point when it reach at the maximum height its final vertical velocity becomes zero so i mean final velocity mean final vertical velocity which is equal to zero at certain height h and initial velocity mean initial vertical velocity which is v not y so put these values v f square ki jaga ab v y square put kar le v f is v y which is zero actually minus v i square ki jaga ab initial vertical velocity find put kar le right let me repeat the initial vertical velocity of projectile is v not y so vi ki jagah hum v not y put kar lenge the final vertical velocity when the projectile reaches to the height so maximum height it stops for an instant of time so there the vertical velocity the final vertical velocity of projectile becomes zero so we have ki jagah hum vi y put kar lenge and here put zero over here as the final vertical velocity of projectile is vy and vy at certain height h is zero so what we get minus 2gh is equal to zero square is zero and v not y we know that v not y is equal to v not y is equal to v not sin of theta and it has a square on it so what are we left with minus 2gh is equal to minus v not square sin square theta now both sides contain a negative sign so it will cancel out so we are left with the term 2gh is equal to v not square sin square theta now if we divide both side dividing both side by 2g why we are dividing both side by 2g because we are to find the equation for height so to find the equation for height we will divide both side by 2g that is 2g h is side ko bhi 2g pe divide kar le aur is equal to v not square sin square theta isko bhi 2g pe divide kar le similar terms will cancel out each other so we are left with h is equal to v not square sin square theta divided by 2g so this is the equation through which we can find out the height of projectile or the summit of projectile for example if a missile is fired and you are told you are asked to find the height of project, uh, the missile that is how high the missile will go what will be the height of the missile attained so if we know two things 
we can easily find out the height or the summit of projectile that is in this equation if we know the initial velocity of projectile with which it is thrown with which velocity the projectile is thrown initially from the point of projection from the earth's surface so if we know the initial velocity we not and if we know the angle of projection the angle with which it is thrown from the point of projection that is projectile jab zameen se phenka ja raha tha missile to us waqt ye earth ke sath kitna angle bana raha tha to agar hame ye do cheeze maloom ho initial velocity and the theta with which it is thrown we can easily find out the height attained by projectile we can easily find out how high the projectile or the missile will rise what will be the height or what will be the summit of projectile we can easily find out the value of summit or the value of height by using this equation so this is the formula for which the problems relating the numerical problems relating to the height or summit of projectile can be solved i hope you would have understand let me repeat the maximum height of projectile kya cheez hai the greatest vertical distance reached by a projectile from the point of projection is called maximum height or summit of projectile jab hum projectile ko phenkte hain point of projection se ye ja raha hai point of landing ki taraf to horizontal distance ko ignore kare ye vertically kitna upar jayega y axis mein ye kitna distance cover karega this is what we call the maximum height or summit of projectile so using third equation of motion we found the values or the equation for height or summit of projectile now using this equation we can trace about the height or the summit attained by a projectile during the course of its journey now let's uh, do another parameter of uh, projectile motion another term that is related to the projectile motion is time of flight now what is time of flight by time of flight we mean the time required for projectile for its whole journey time of flight mean time of flight mean the time required for projectile to reach from the point of projection to the point of landing the point of projection is a point of landing तक पहुंचने के लिए कितना टाइम लेगा दैट इज कॉल्ड द टाइम ऑफ लाइट वॉट विल बी द वैल्यू ऑफ टाइम ऑफ लाइट वी कैन फाइंड आउट दिस वैल्यू इफ वी हैव इक्वेशन फॉर इट इफ वी डिराइव अ फार्मूला फॉर फाइंडिंग द टाइम ऑफ लाइट नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट मी डिफाइन द टाइम ऑफ लाइट द टाइम रिक्वायर्ड the time required for projectile the time required for projectile to reach to the same horizontal level from which it was projected from which it was projected is called time of flight in simple word if we throw a missile from earth surface so definitely it will hit have, have hit uh, the earth again it will fall towards the earth again so from the point of projection from the point of throwing to the point of landing प्रोजेक्टाइल को हमने अर्थ से थ्रो किया तो अर्थ से वापस अर्थ तक आने के लिए पॉइंट ऑफ प्रोजेक्शन से पॉइंट ऑफ लैंडिंग तक आने के लिए कितनी देर हवा में रहेगा दैट इज कॉल्ड टाइम ऑफ लाइट द टाइम रिक्वायर्ड फॉर प्रोजेक्टाइल टू रीच टू द सेम हरिजेंटल लेवल फ्रॉम विच इट वॉज थ्रोन इस लेवल से हमने इसे फेंका है तो इसी लेवल तक वापस आने के लिए ये कितना टाइम लेगा 
that is called the time of flight. In simple words, the time required for the entire journey of projectile is called time of flight. Right? Now, to derive the equation for time of flight, we will use second equation of motion. To derive equation for time of flight for projectile we will use second equation of motion now what is the second equation of motion basically it is s is equal to vit plus half at square this is the second equation of motion but as this motion is against the gravity, it's vertical motion, so A will be replaced with G and S, the distance will be replaced with height. But more specifically speaking, as initially it is against, it is moving against the gravity, so A will be replaced with minus G. Clear? So this equation becomes H is equal to VIT minus half g d square apart from it as the a is replaced by minus g the distance is replaced by height the initial velocity will be replaced by initial vertical velocity because the tendency of motion initially when we throw a missile or when we throw any projectile the initial motion the initial tendency of motion of projectile is almost vertical after some time it reaches a certain height and you know then it becomes parallel for a while and then parallel to the x-axis and then move downward so initially as the vertical motion in projectile initially as the vertical motion is more prominent in projectile motion so its initial velocity will be taken as initial vertical velocity right now when the projectile is thrown from the point of projection from earth's surface so its height from the earth's surface is zero and when it returns again to the earth when it returns again to the earth so its height again becomes zero so i mean in this equation put zero for height put zero for height put initial vertical velocity for vi we I mean initial vertical velocity time as it is minus half g t square as it is I hope you have got this point why we put zero for height because the projectile returns uh, uh, returns to the same horizontal level from which it was projected humne ise earth se penka hai aur ye earth tak aayega to jab wadi earth pe padi hoti hai to iski height zero hoti hai और ये वापस अर्थ पे आ रही है तो इसकी हाइट वापस जीरो होगी तो पुट जीरो फॉर हाइट नाउ लेट्स प्रोसीड एज वी नो दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडी दैट द एक्स कंपोनेंट ऑफ अ वेक्टर इज इक्वल टू इफ यू हैव अ वेक्टर ए सो इट्स एक्स कंपोनेंट इज ए एक्स इज इक्वल टू ए कॉस थीटा एंड इट्स वाई कंपोनेंट ए वाई इज इक्वल टू ए साइन ऑफ थीटा सो हेयर द वैक्टर इज नॉट ए बट द वैक्टर इज वी वेलोसिटी so as a y is a sin theta so v y will be v not y will be v not sin of theta so put v not sin of theta for v not y multiplied by t as it is minus half g t square as it is now this value is negative on the right side of the equation now shift this value to the left side of the equation so it will become plus half g t square and v not sin of theta into t as it is what we did we shift the negative half g t square from the right side of the equation to the left side of the equation right what we did we shift the negative value minus half g t square from the right of the equation to the left of the equation right now the similar term will cancel out each other so we are left with half g 
single T and V naught sine of theta. Right? Now, as we are finding the time of light, so we will multiply both sides, multiplying both sides, multiplying both sides by 2 divided by g. 2 divided by g multiplied by the left side of the equation and 2 divided by g multiplied by the right side of the equation. So the similar term on the left side of the equation will cancel out each other. So we are left with t which is time of light and it is turned out to be 2 v naught sine of theta divided by g. So this is the required equation for time of flight of projectile. What does it mean? It means that if we throw a missile from earth's surface and it returns again to the earth, so how long will it take? What will be the time span of projectile? What will be the time of journey for projectile from the point of projection to the point of landing? What will be the time span of projectile? So we can know about this time span using this formula. This is the formula for finding the time of flight of projectile. Right? If we know two things, again, how will we find the time of flight? Let's suppose a missile is fired from a certain city and it goes to a certain city. So how will we come to know that how long will it take? What will be the time taken by the missile? We can easily find out the time taken by the missile throughout its journey. If we know two things, number first, with which velocity it was thrown initially, initial velocity, and with which angle it was thrown or projected. When the projectile or the missile was fired, so what was its initial velocity and what was the angle of the velocity or what was the angle of the missile with the x-axis. So if we know these two things, initial velocity and the angle of projection with which the projectile is thrown if we know these two things we can easily find out the time of flight of projectile right let me repeat again time of flight mean the time required for projectile to reach the same horizontal level from which it was projected that is just point say humne projectile ko pen ka hai जिस हाइट से जिस लेवल से हमने प्रोजेक्टाइल को फेंका है उसी लेवल तक आने के लिए प्रोजेक्टाइल कितना टाइम लेगा दिस इज कॉल्ड टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट नाउ टू डिराइव इक्वेशन फॉर टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट वी यूज सेकेंड इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन नाउ वी नो दैट द सेकेंड इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन इज एस इज इक्वल टू वी आई टी प्लस हाफ ए डी स्क्वायर but here as the motion of projectile or the motion of missile is initially more prominent in y axis so it is motion and it is motion against gravity so a will be replaced with minus g s will be replaced with height distance will be replaced with height and the initial velocity means the initial vertical velocity initial velocity in y axis so if we put these values in equation Second equation, S become H, the VI becomes uh, V naught Y, right? The VI become V naught Y and the A becomes minus G. Now, as the projectile returns to the earth, so its distance from the earth being on earth surface, zameen par hote huye, projectile ki height zameen se kitni hoge? अभी जमीन पर गिरता है तो इसकी हाइट जमीन से जीरो रह जाती है तो पुट जीरो फॉर हाइट वी नॉट वाई एज इट इज टी एज इट इज ये एज इट इज नो वी नॉट वाई इज इक्वल टू वी नॉट साइन ऑफ थीटा एन टू टी माइनस हाफ जी डी स्क्वायर नाउ दिस नेगेटिव वैल्यू माइनस हाफ जी डी स्क्वायर when this negative value is shifted towards the right of the uh, towards the left of the equation 
when this negative value is shifted towards the left side of the equation it becomes positive and this thing remains as it is now the similar terms cancel out each other so a single t will be cancelled out with this t and we are left with the half g t v not sign of theta now if we multiply both side by 2 divided by g why are we doing this multiplication because we are finding the value of t we will make the t alone so multiplying both side by 2 by g on the left of the equation and 2 by g multiplied by the right side of the equation similar terms will cancel out each other so we are left with t is equal to 2 v naught sine of theta divided by g so this is the equation for time up light up projectile using this equation we can easily find out the time of flight for projectile clear now the next parameter the fourth parameter related to the projectile motion is half time of flight half time of flight the half time of flight as its name implies the time required for half of the journey the time taken by projectile to cover half of its journey or the time required for projectile to reach the maximum height to reach the summit right how we define the half time of flight the time required for projectile the time required for projectile to reach the summit or to cover hop up journey is called half time of flight the time required for projectile to reach half of the journey to cover half of the journey or the time required per projectile to reach the summit to reach the maximum height is called half time applied now half time applied is actually equal to total time applied divided by 2 as we know that the complete journey requires a time t so half of the journey will require a time t by 2 so time applied is 2 in our sine theta divided by g Time applied is 2 v naught sine of theta divided by g and divide by 2. So if we reciprocate it, if we change the division sign to multiplication sign, it will become 1 over 2. 2 cancels out 2. So we are left with what will be the final equation for half time applied? v naught sine of theta divide by g so using this equation we can find out the half time of light of projectile okay projectile ko point of projection se point of landing tak pochne ke liye to time of flight required hota hai na complete time of flight is hum kehte hain lekin jab projectile half journey cover karna chahe ya jab projectile maximum height tak pahunche to maximum height tak pahunchne ke liye Projectile kitna time lega? That is called half time of flight. The time required for projectile to reach the summit or the time required for projectile to cover half of the journey, half of the path, that time is called half time of flight. And the half time of flight is half of the total time of flight. Total time of flight divided by 2. Now the total time of flight is 2 v naught sine theta divided by g divided by 2 2 v naught sine theta divided by g so multiplication may change kare to e1 over 2 re jayega so the half time of flight is v naught sine of theta divided by g so this is what we call half time of flight now the last term related to projectile motion is its range by range we mean how much distance the projectile covered horizontally during the course of its journey the last thing is range of projectile range of 
projectile. By range of projectile we mean the maximum horizontal distance the maximum horizontal distance covered by projectile the maximum horizontal distance covered by projectile from the point of projection from the point of projection to the point of landing this is what we called okay let's suppose we have a projectile so this is the path followed by a projectile we want to throw the projectile from here from ct a to ct b now the path followed by a projectile is like this so it doesn't matter how much distance it covers vertically it doesn't matter how much distance is covered horizontally that is called the range of projectile <clears throat> the horizontal distance covered by a projectile from the point of projection to the point of landing is called range of projectile well, let me repeat when the projectile or missile is fired so how much distance it covers horizontally on x-axis this is what we call range from the point of projection the distance from the point of projection to the point of landing horizontally is called range of projectile. This distance is called range of projectile. Now, to derive the equation for range of projectile, to derive the equation for range of projectile, the equation for range of projectile use the formula of speed use the simple formula of speed now as we know that the formula for speed is distance covered divided by time taken the formula for speed is distance covered divided by time taken v is equal to s by t now if we cross multiply this so we get s is equal to v into t right now the distance by distance here we mean the range of projectile and what about v remember the velocity during the course of its journey has two component of velocity we not x component and we not y component so which component will be taken here remember here we will take we not x component of velocity why we not x component of velocity because we have clearly stated here that the maximum horizontal distance covered by a projectile from the point of projection to the point of landing is called range of projectile so if this is the range so you clearly see that from the point of projection to the point of landing this distance is purely horizontal so we will take the horizontal component of velocity that is v naught x so for v we put v naught x and what about t multiplied by t t will be written as time applied why time applied because we are going through such a path which involves two points the point of projection and the point of landing from here to here so this is the whole journey of projectile. These two point defines the complete journey of projectile motion. <clears throat> so if it is the complete journey of projectile motion, 
So the time taken by a projectile to reach from the starting point to the very end point is called time of flight. So here the S becomes R that is the horizontal distance is called range. The V becomes V naught X because we are purely studying the horizontal range of projectile. So we will take the horizontal component of velocity of projectile. The T becomes capital T that is the time applied because we study that we, we already said that so many times that the, this is the time required for the whole journey actually. So we will take the uh, complete time of light. Now put the corresponding values in this equation. We know that V naught X is equal to V naught cos of theta. V naught X key value here V naught cos of theta and the value of the time applied is 2 V naught sine of theta divided by G. Now if we further simplify it so what do we get? Look V when gets multiplied with V it becomes V square. V naught multiplied by V naught becomes V naught square and 2 sine theta cos theta 2 sine theta cos theta is written as it is divided by this g. What we did we put the corresponding values for s is r for v is v naught x for t is the time applied. Now we clearly know that v naught x is equal to v naught cos of theta the value of time of light is 2 v naught sine theta divided by g. Now we if we simplify it so v naught multiplied by v naught is v naught square and this 2 sine theta cos theta is written as it is divided by g. Now this is a mathematical formula mathematical identity that 2 sine theta remember 2 sine theta cos theta is equal to sine of 2 theta. This is a mathematical identity. Clear? The value 2 sine theta cos theta is equal to sine of 2 theta. This is a trigonometric identity. You have studied it in mathematics. So replace 2 sine theta cos theta by sine of 2 theta. So what do we get? R is equal to V naught square sine of 2 theta divided by G. This is the final equation for range of projectile. Again, how will we find if a missile is fired from Peshawar to let's suppose Lahore? So, how will we find that? What is the range? What is the total horizontal distance covered by that missile? We can easily find uh, the range of the missile or any projectile if we know the two things. The initial vertical velocity with which it is thrown and the angle of projection which the projectile makes with the x-axis. So using this equation we can find out the range of projectile. Now from this equation it is quite obvious that the range of projectile will be maximum at 45 degrees. The rest of the remaining angles will not result in a maximum value of range. The only value of theta that result in the maximum range is 45 degrees. That is, if we put in this equation, if we put theta is 45 degree. So, V naught square by G as it is and it will become what? Sine of 90 degree. 245 are 90. So, if we simplify it, so range turns out to be V naught square divided by G and sine 90 is equal to 1. See? So, we are having the maximum possible value if we throw the missile or any projectile with an angle of projection of 
45 degree. If we fire anything from the earth at 45 degree angle, so we will have a maximum possible value of range. That is the projectile will have a very maximum range if the angle is 45 degree. Now try out other angles, you will see that the value will be greater than 0 but less than maximum less than 1. So this is what we call range of projectile. I hope you would have understand. Uh, let's meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Allah Hafiz.